Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm my day job, I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, uh, but this is not about my day job. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've been to the Senior Center, see my presentations, you know that Frank and Mary uh, and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., they're, they're, Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And the goal of this show is to let you know um, and them know who the people they need to know, what are the programs they need to know about in order to stay right here in Ashland forever. With me is the, my co-host whom ev everybody seems to know, Steve Mitchell. Uh, Steve, who has been a selectman now for a while and fairly recently reelected again. Um, and he, he, is, he is charged with finding these great guests and he continues to do that. Uh, and, and, and today, kind of a famous one whom many of you have already, already know, but, but um, Steve has, has uh, lured her onto the show to give you an update on what's going on. Steve, whom do we have today? Well, thank you, Art. Always a pleasure being here with you, uh, uh, Frank and Mary. And, you know, it took a little while. Uh, you know, uh, we've got uh, uh, Senate President Karen Spilka with us today. And, you know, her, her workload, her life, I think, has just become uh, just ramped up and escalated. So we were fortunate because they're in informal sessions right now to, to be able to entice Karen to uh, join us this morning. And uh, so welcome Senate President uh, Karen Spilka. And uh, we really appreciate you spending time. And, you know, really we, we'd like to talk about, uh, hear from you about, you know, your work with, with the senior community. You've been very active with, with, with seniors over many, many years. You know, with your, your health fair, um, you know, certainly you were instrumental with uh, getting the dementia friendly grant for the town of Ashland that we've implemented. So, you know, just welcome and, uh, you know, how you doing? Great, great. It's great to see both of you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Art. Uh, this is uh, a great show and it, it provides a, a benefit to the residents of Ashland. So thank you for doing it. It's been a while since I've been, been on this show, but it's great to see both of you, even if it's remote at this point still. Um, yeah, we, uh, we work hard in my office to to help all the residents of, of Ashland. Uh, constituent services is, I believe, the most important thing that I do to help the residents of my, my district, of all of my communities. And uh, the, the residents of Ashland have uh, been working really hard during these last few few months and, and you know, particularly in staying healthy and well, and I thank them. Uh, and I, I do, you mentioned my senior fair. Um, this year, I think would have been my 15th senior, annual senior fair, it's hard to believe. Uh, and I think so many, hopefully so many people watching this have been to the senior fair. We're on a Saturday, we provide a lot of services, a lot of uh, references and support for seniors across the Metro West area. This year, we are hoping to do a virtual senior fair, uh, sort of like what we're doing now and having guest speakers. It would still be the same idea, the same purpose to provide um, seniors and connect seniors to resources for their health, whether it be their mental health, their physical health, uh, to meet the needs and for, for seniors across the district to get resources that they may need to live long, live healthy, and live well uh, in their homes or, or wherever they are, long-term care or whatever facility that they may be at. But we would be doing that. Um, it would be different. We would maybe do it for an hour or so, and that's it. Looking forward to this fall, before Thanksgiving. Uh, so I just ask folks to please stay tuned. Once we have a date, we will send out the information. We have hundreds of seniors that have signed up for this annual health and welfare, health and well uh, fair previously. So we would let them know and hopefully help them uh, figure out how to connect remotely and do it virtually as well. But we figure an hour or so 
might be all you know that the sufficient for this year so we will let people know um so it'll be different you know we are trying to be nimble and, and uh, on the circumstances but um you know in terms of of other f support for seniors we've worked hard i've worked hard to get you know tax relief for seniors and as you mentioned uh support for our senior friendly uh town and i want to applaud you and the other select board members and Michael Herbert and Jen Ball and others in implementing a dementia friendly town and particularly the hoarding task force. I was very pleased to be able to get earmarks in the budget. So I was able to get actual funds for these programs to support them uh, because they are very innovative. They are definitely needed at this point. Um, and I think Ashland is really leading the way and is a model for other communities across our state and probably nation in these areas. So I want to thank you and it's, it's been great to be able to support uh, the town for that. That's the Senator, I, just want to, I just wanted to mention, if you're having the senior fair and there are any particular guest speakers that you want to kind of highlight, you know, Steve and I could, would be happy to have those folks on this show also, just so they'd have more kind of more visibility, if there's anybody in okay, particular. Okay, great. And, and we will let you know in advance what the day is. We're still work it, working on it. So uh, we'll let you know so that you yeah. could let your viewers know. That would be and great. I, and I can tell you just personally, so just st Steve is the Ashland person, but per personally, Senator, you've done some things, the, the position, the things that you've done to help seniors over so many of these issues with, you know, the issues that are fundamental to, to clients, to elders. I still remember a few years ago when there was, a, when there was an initiative by the then governor uh, to impose uh, this, the, these more lean controls regarding assets of, of folks, older seniors who were in nursing homes. And, and, and it looked like it was gonna be part of the budget. And I know that it was really due to a lot of your efforts that that, 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 that issue ended up getting stopped I know there are several like that where you really defended senior. It's really quite something, but I just wanted to mention that. Steve. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Art. But, uh, and thank you, Karen, for, you know, I think we do, you know, we're, we're both in the same, I think, uh, form of business in a sense, and, <laughs> and that's the quality of life for, right. for our residents, right? And, you know, we try, I mean, it's very important to me. I know it's very important to you, uh, and I believe for, uh, for my colleagues on the board is to make Ashland as livable a place as we can. And how do we support that? And, you know, uh, seniors are such an integral part of that demographic. And uh, we're actually aging as a community where, you know, our, our demographic is, is, is aging as we, we move forward. And, uh, but, you know, the, the challenges of, uh, of COVID-19, uh, you know, how do you see things. I mean, yes, we're trying to do virtual things, but there's still a challenge with connecting with people uh, and particularly yeah. seniors because they're not plugged in necessarily. They, they you know, we spend time, uh, uh, you know, I, I stay in contact with our community center and they're challenged with, you know, getting, uh, reaching out to folks at this point. Yeah. Um, as it is, it's hard to sometimes connect, particularly with seniors. There's some that go to the community center, the senior center very frequently, uh, and many that do not. And, uh, and I know particularly now, uh, isolationism and uh, being isolated, uh, depression, it's really hard. It's hard for everybody, but particularly for seniors who are feeling it. It's something that I have been very closely attuned to. Uh, and, and that's one thing that I would try to address in the senior health and wellness fair. But, you know, it, it's something that um, I have always been, as you know, I, my, my father had mental illness. So I, I really try to, to do what I can and try to work with, with you know, the, the board members and others. Um, we have tried to focus on uh, particularly mental health issues during this time and we've done some uh outreach we've done actually i've worked with uh the secretary of health and human services and doing some public service announcements which we did back in april may specifically geared towards covid 
And now that it's September, we are, we are literally working on another public service announcement for reaching out, particularly for seniors who are isolated um, and, and for young people. I mean, it, it, it's, it's hitting everybody um, and it's going on a while and it yet will continue for a while as, as we all know. But there will be uh, on TV, hopefully starting within a couple of weeks, you'll see other public service announcements. I've been working with um, some agencies to, to produce them to uh, make sure that people reach out. You know, so if you have a neighbor, uh, particularly uh, an elder neighbor who might be isolated, you know, give them a call, knock on their door, reach out. Don't just, if you ask somebody if they're okay and they say, yeah, I'm fine, or, you know, yeah, can't complain. Very often they just need a little bit of prodding. Are you sure? You know, how are you doing? And I think that particularly with seniors beyond, you know, family, I think is important to follow up, but our friends, our neighbors and just reach. And if we all do that, Ashland is an incredible community to live in. And that's one reason why we decided to, to stay here, to move here, stay here and raise a family. And you know, I think that, that we really take the term neighbor and care and caring uh, very seriously. So I think that we all need to keep that in mind. Um, we, I, I have personally and my staff worked very closely with uh, the town director, Ed Berman, and others in towns to follow and monitor uh, the status of what was going on with COVID. We all know people who we've lost. Um, I had a couple of dear friends who passed away from COVID-19. So, you know, whenever there was more need for testing, uh, I was able to push and call in the state to help get more testing done um, and getting more some ongoing mental health services, particularly in the long-term care facilities and nursing homes that are in Ashland to make sure that all was being done to help keep the residents healthy and well. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, you know, obviously we, you know, we're all working to, uh, to provide as much support as we can. I know the town is, uh, uh, partnering with Meals on Wheels because we can't do, you know, the, you're, you're a member of the Ashland Lions like I am, Karen, and we always had those Thursday morning, once a month, Thursday morning breakfasts, very popular. Right, right. Gone, right, until who knows when. Right. But we're, we're partnering, partnering with uh, Meals on Wheels to do a, a, a lunch program. It'll be a drive-by lunch program, but at least the seniors can get out. They can pick up a lunch Mm -hmm. And it's something it's, you know, we, we've, you, you're absolutely right. We've got to make these efforts to, to reach people as best we can and to look out for our neighbors. And right. you know, I think, uh, and, and you're not part of this, this demographic. I mean, Ar Arthur and I are, you know, I think part of the elder uh, demographic and we're uh, way up there. We're way up <laughs> there. That's right. But uh, you know, it's, we're fortunate, you know, because we have the resources, we have uh, our family network. Right. Uh, not, every not everybody senior. has that. And, That's and, right. and as you point out, Senator, that you know, and, and, and Steve, the, the key is just to look down the street and just check in on people. It's this, so much of this is just this kind of one on one, just kind of paying right. attention. Because once, well, I think one of the things that's certainly common among seniors, they don't like to complain. And they don't like to reach out for help. And they don't want to be, oh, you know, oh, woe is me. But at the same time, just to, to, to you, they, you can't believe how much just a few words can mean, right? right. Especially for exactly. people who are so isolated. Right? Exactly. And there are a lot more people isolated right now. We all are to an extent, but many a lot more. And it's very difficult. It's really hard. And it's hard. Uh, to fight back the depression. And once, you know, that sits in, then it's even harder to get out and fight being isolated. So it's sort of like a vicious circle for many. So yeah. I think that's what we just all need to be aware of and reach out and help whenever we can. And sometimes it is just a follow-up statement. Are you sure you're doing okay? You know, can I do anything to help? 
or I'm here to listen. You know, those, those words can really make a difference. Sure. So one of the things that was always popular at, at your senior health and wellness fair was the flu shots. Right. And, right. right? And, uh, you know, now I know we're, we're coming into flu season. I believe some of the pharmacies are already doing flu shots. Uh, I know, um, you know, certainly personal doctors are as well. But, you know, I think we need to stress the importance, particularly this year, of getting flu shots. Right, right. Particularly those that are more vulnerable and, and seniors, the, the elder population clearly is among them. I know I have to figure out how I'm going to get my own flu shot. I used to like to go to the senior fair and get my flu shot. Um, yeah. I need to plan for that because uh, clearly with COVID-19, uh, we, we don't want people to end up with potentially two different viruses they could really wreak havoc on, uh, on a person. So I think that it's just really important for people to uh, get a flu shot, to make sure that they call their doctor, find out where is the best place to go, whether it be a local pharmacy or their doctor. But uh, I, I, it's, it's really, really important. It's important every year, but I think this year even more so. If, if I if I could just if I could just ask so Senator what, you know I like you have, you know found several people who have died in the nature of my clientele they're all seniors and I think I had 13 people in all who died of COVID or COVID related 11 of them you know in nursing homes or from nursing home to the hospital and then out and so I was just wondering from your perspective do you think that that this is going to this will have an effect on the way that that, that, the, that the state regulates nursing homes, that nursing homes kind of are run in the future, because certainly that, that was a, that's been a concern. It's kind of scary to people who've been trying to get some of their people out of nursing homes, you know, just because they were worried about it. I'm yeah, just you know, when, when the nursing home numbers are went up and they kept on rising with, with COVID cases, uh, I was in daily contact with the governor and the secretary of health and human services that, uh, that was overseeing the command center for COVID-19. It really concerned me like all of us and them too, um, to push to be uh, at very aggressive. Uh, many nursing homes, probably most were doing what they needed to do, but we were hearing that some nursing homes were not separating residents, the positive cases and the negative cases. Some were not separating staff. Staff was going to uh, many different nursing homes. Um, and if you were positive and they were, the staff person was not tested, they could very well be the source of, of the virus. So uh, we really pushed hard and we ended up using some of the Federal CARES Act money to be very aggressive and say, you need some more funds here, you're getting them now, but every two weeks, if you want more funds, you have to meet this list of criteria that we as a state are setting forth. You have to make sure that you're doing testing on a regular basis and you know, separation and, and you know, a whole bunch of different things cleaning and sanitizing and masks and, and everything else. Um, and most of our nursing homes across the state did that. There were maybe a handful that did not. An action was taken against those nursing homes and some residents were moved to other nursing homes. Fortunately, Ashland did not have uh, any of those negative cases, but uh, I do believe that we need to ensure and monitor uh, and closely regulate the, the nursing homes for the safety of the residents. It's hard because anytime you have people so closely together, it's like why people are concerned about the dorms, dorm rooms at colleges and other situations where you have a lot of people closely together. It is difficult, but it's not impossible and we can do it. And as a state, we, we have the know-how, we have the health uh, knowledge, um, and, that, and, and we can do it. So uh, hopefully there will not be a second surge. We are trying very carefully to monitor the numbers and 
watch it so that we are opening, but not too rapidly uh, to make sure that, that our, our numbers, our COVID-19 numbers uh, stay low. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. So uh, I, I just I don't want to forget, I think it's important that we acknowledge uh, and thank, you know, our first responders in Ashland that are so involved with, uh, with the COVID. So, you know, the police and the fire department, our nurses, uh, right. certainly staff uh, that are working, our human services people that, that, that are at the community center and so on. And, and I think we also have to acknowledge, even though that our, our show is dedicated towards senior issues, you know, this has had such a dramatic impact on, on students, on kids, on families, yeah, young everybody, families. Everybody, everybody. Yeah. yeah you and, can't, yeah. You, you know, this, we can't live in a vacuum. And you're right, I do want to congratulate and thank our first responders. Talk about it being a difficult time if they are responding to people who are really, really ill. It's been very difficult for them as well, you know, to, to see people so, so ill. Um, and and people that if they're, you're you know you're in the community so much many of them they know personally as well so uh, it, it's been hard and they have done a wonderful job and the essential service workers and just people have risen to the occasion I'm hoping I I, I pray that the worst is behind us and you know people can can continue until. Uh, hopefully, we, in, in several months, we have a vaccine, but it will take a while to distribute a va vaccine, many, many months to people. Um, I've urged the governor to start thinking about how we will deal with a vaccine. I, I imagine, you know, states will purchase it. I don't want it to be the same thing as the PPEs, the protective equipment personal protective equipment where there was a mad rush and a dearth. There was a real uh, uh, heart. It was a very difficult to find the PPEs and get a hold of them. And then the federal government was literally, once the state bought several major shipments of PPEs, the federal government came in and took them. You know, they stopped them from coming either into Massachusetts or tried to take them from Massachusetts. That's a terrible situation. And I think that we need to start thinking about, you know, vaccines and how how we would get them and start planning the distribution probably to, you know, those most vulnerable populations, our essential essential workers, our um, you know, police, fire, emergency personnel, et cetera. So yeah. I, don't, I don't think we can wait until we actually start getting it. Yeah. So I have an unrelated question right now. So we are filming this the day after the Massachusetts primary. So are you pleased with the results? I think you were on the uh, ballot this year and uh, I think you were successful in your primary yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, I, I won. <laughs> you know, um, uh, full disclosure, there was nobody running against me, but um, I hope that, that people feel that I continue to be very responsive and uh, I still love what I do. Every day is different. Again, I started out as a social worker. As I said earlier, I believe the primary focus of my job is is constituent services helping people this is what i do this is like the select board members i mean this is what we do and why uh we are in in this work i still believe uh making a positive difference for people and uh, improving quality of life like we were talking with the seniors and wanting people to be as, as healthy and well for as long as possible, living in their the community they want to live, how they want to live, and uh, I, I still love what I do. So I should have opened by congratulating the both of you on your recent election <laughs> victories. Well, I so still have the general election. You still got the, the general. Right. November 3rd, remember, and I just want to say, I think all records will be broken with mail-in ballots. That was another thing that we did uh, because of COVID-19. And I think it particularly helps seniors too, who may have had a hard time or did not want to go to the polls. This is the first time uh, that we have done mail-in balloting for primaries like this. 
and we've done it for general elections, but not primaries. And I think that there will be close to or over a million ballots cast via the mail. And that's, I think, a terrific way to go for so many people. That's a great point. And I think, you know, I, we won't get into the whole issues with, with the post office and so on. That's unrelated. But, you know, I think this, you know, if probably one uh, opportunity to make, I guess, lemonade out of lemons is to look at how we could adjust the way we conduct elections, right. meetings, learning because of COVID-19. That's, that's, and that's a good, and I, I suppose I'm just looking, I'm, I'm the designated timekeeper and I'm looking at our time, but I think that's probably not a bad way to end is that optimistically that the goal of this exercise is to try to get lemonade from lemons, you know? But I think that that will be, I'm hoping that will be for every aspect of our life. What have we right. learned as we go into a new normal? We're not going back to the old ways pre-COVID-19, our lives will be changed. They are changed and it will, they will continue to be changed. So what can we learn from, from elections, from economic development, from, from every aspect, from education, every aspect of our school, job creation, uh, things will be different. And I think we need to be open to those differences and grab them in a positive way but still hold on to who we are. We are people, people, you know, I mean, we, you need people contact and I think that it's been hard. So I thank you both for doing this. Any outreach to our, uh, our residents, I, I believe is really, really helpful. And it's been great helping to spread the word and be on your show. So Steve, thank you very, very much for convincing your friend Karen Spokel to come on to the show. Uh, thank and you. thank you very much, Senator, for coming. Uh, and for the folks who are watching, we really appreciate your watching. Uh, and and uh, we'll hope you'll, you'll tune in to the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Thanks. Thanks.